All right, so today we are talking about the Easy Modbus Library. This is a custom library written on the MCI 210 module. Today we're going to use it with the King Pigeon IO device. All right, as you can see, we are on the web page for the IO bus coupler. And the nice thing about this particular bus coupler that I like, there's a couple of things. The first thing I like is that it gives you the model number of the bus coupler that you are currently logged on with. And the second thing is the IO setup and test page. When you come to this page, you're able to actually manually turn on each of the output coils for the particular bus coupler that you're looking at. If you were looking at my bus coupler right now, as I turn these on and off, you would see a red LED light turn on and off, showing you that, yes, indeed, it is turning on and off that particular output. You can also do the same thing with the digital inputs here. I'll try to turn one on for you. As you can see, input number one is on, and I can turn it back off. So it's nice in that it gives you live data. If your bus coupler has analog, you would also be able to use the analog device. So before we go too far, I need to talk about the library required. This library is called Easy Modbus, and I'm using version 0.1.6.3. It is a custom library, which means, one, it's not supported by CT at all. So if you try to call them up asking for help, they will not help you. It's totally custom. That said, it is a lot easier to use than the standard CT from a couple of points of view. Uh, the one we're going to talk about today, of course, is that it knows particular devices. What I mean by that is if you come here to the MCI 210, you'll see that there are some third-party devices that are natively supported by this library. And if you click on it, you'll see that there's some Phoenix and there's also King Pigeon. Today we're talking about the King Pigeon, and if you open it, you'll see that there are five King Pigeon devices supported by this library. The device we're going to use today is the M140T, and you can see that there are three blocks underneath it. Most of the time you will not need the setup or the info. The info block is specific for the King Pigeon device. It really just reports back a serial number the number of times it was powered on, some hardware version information. The setup, this is for alternate setup for the Modbus timeouts and port numbers. As you can see, by clicking on it, there are some default settings here. So the timeout for the response and the connection are both set to about a second. The port's default is 502 and the unit ID is 1. So I don't know any reason why you'd really ever change this. If you come to the main part of the block, it shows you what this block looks like. It's got eight digital outputs, eight digital inputs, and then there's another set of eight digital outputs, but technically these ones are just exactly the same as this. See this input? It says read digital outputs. If this is on, then after it's done writing this, it will go and read the data right back. And this is handy for confirming that the data is getting out to the bus coupler, but it also adds an extra step which slows down the cycle time of your messages. How you use this block is you turn the start on and it just cycles through it. You don't have to know anything about the King Pigeon device other than the IP address that you give it. You can see I have populated all the inputs and all the outputs of this block. And you may also notice, if you're familiar with the Unidrive M700, that I have the start, one shot, and the read all tied to some digital inputs so that I can cycle things, just so you can see what it looks like as we play with it. Right here is the history. If there's any errors, it's because you're not connected or something's going south, right? I'm not going to really play with this or this on this video. So let's connect. All right, so here we are. We've connected. I have one little line up here that basically 
I'm using the analog input number 7 if it has a value greater than 50. I'm just having it increment the digital outputs. So you can see I'm sending a whole bunch of different digital outputs right here. And if you come back over here, you'll see that I'm not reading any of them back from the bus coupler. Well, if I turn on 8.004, which is a digital input, you can see now that it's reading back the data out of the bus coupler. Okay. If I go over to my bus coupler and with my little wire touch each of the digital inputs, you'll see each of these turn on. All right, so you've seen each of those turn on. And like I said about the web page, if we come back over to the web page, you can see that, so I just wanted to point this out. Again, this is a really handy page that a lot of bus couplers don't support. The only real downside to this bus coupler is it's not UL listed. It is CE listed, just not UL. So down here, you can see that there's no trip history. If there was history, of some sort you'd see it cycle through here okay so I'm going to actually unplug the bus coupler to show you what I mean see now we're getting air connections right and <clears throat> what this timestamp is doing it is telling you that this is when the last error happened however there's this nice little show elapsed time and if it's on, it tells you how long it's been since the last error. So it's basically saying that every one second, it's getting an error connection timeout. Well, of course, that makes sense because we have the error connection timeout set to one second. So I'm going to plug this back in. And you can see that the current error went to no errors. And the bus coupler is talking just properly again. Input number five right here is tied to this clear history. So you can clear the history just like as we did. And the last thing to talk about is this thing called one shot. Most of the time you use it just for debugging, you know, or maybe you have a case where you only want it to read or write to a particular block once and then maybe you change the IP address or something. I don't know. So if this is on, you need to hit the start and it's rising edge every time you want it to send and read a message so what it does is it does this one then it does this one then it does this one then it finishes okay so I'm going to turn one shot off let it run normally also here's the average time what the average cycle time is telling you is that it's the amount of time it takes for it to send this read this data back and read this data back You'll notice that if I turn off 804, which is the digital output, that this, of course, goes to a lower value. And that's because it's no longer wasting time reading this information back out of the bus coupler. If you like this video, please subscribe or put a comment below.